continuing with um, the next uh, speaker, which is um, given by Valentine Charles. She is working as an interoperability specialist at Europeana and the European Library. She will speak about the GlamWiki Toolkit project. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, it's working. Okay, so I'm the last presentation of, of the ILAC 2013, so I've been quite stressed about that actually. So today I will uh, speak about the GlamWiki toolset. I uh, have been involved in this project as a metadata specialist that I was working with a, a tiny team of people and the main person in this project was actually a, a developer. So at ELAG, uh, there was a lot of story that were told uh, in this session. So I'm, I'm also going to tell uh, two stories. The first one, you, you know it pretty well. So it's the, um, a library tell, and I had it digital in, in bracket because what I'm going to talk about today is concerned mainly the digitized content of libraries, uh, this content that you can showcase to end user uh, like images, sounds, but also videos, or also a scan picture of books. Um, this is not true. I mean, libraries are digitizing their content, and usually they try to redistribute this content via different channels. So, for example, local project, national initiative, or aggregation services such as Europeana. But uh, we know that this kind of effort. Uh, require resources and that also copyright is also is often the limit to this uh, redistribution of the content. The second story is about open data and I would have I could have said also open content and um, and today I'm mainly going to, to mention Wikimedia Commons. I don't know how much of you are familiar with Wikimedia Commons. Um, yeah. yeah, a bit of people. So Wikimedia Commons is a media file repository which is making available uh, media content, so mainly images, sounds, and video clips. And it is doing so um, in, a, in a public, I mean, this content is publicly available and is freely licensed. And it's available to everyone in every language. And this repository is actually the common repository for all the various projects of the Wikimedia Foundation. So Wikipedia, for example, is, is one of the examples of, of this project. But uh, I have noticed that the, the presence of, of cultural institutions in general and libraries is quite uh, limited in Wikimedia Commons when you search for content there. So quite often, I'm going to find picture for my presentation, I'm going there and I can't really find uh, content coming from a cultural institution. Usually it's picture that has been taken by, by people in the street or um, yeah, for their personal uh, use. So what could be interesting is to put these two stories together. So what if uh, libraries would uh, redistribute this digital content through Wikimedia Commons? So for example, here you have a, a text from the National Library of France, uh, which has been put into Wikimedia Commons. So you have the, the, the media object, and you have also um, some tiny yeah, pieces of metadata accompanying this, uh, this object, and also information about the, the license. So this would be a way, and I think it was mentioned this morning in the lightning talk, to engage uh, library content into different channels, such as uh, Wikimedia Commons. But um, so far, this didn't really happen. So the Wikimedia Foundation is really looking at collaborating with, uh, with what we call the blind community, so the galleries, the libraries, the archive, and the museum community. But why it has been so limited so far? It's just because actually collaborating with Wikimedia Commons and in general Wikimedia Foundation is not so easy. So you might imagine this open community where everybody can go and collaborate, you create your page on Wikipedia, but actually engaging in this community and participating to it is not so easy. Why it, it is not so, so easy? So first, because to contribute content to Wikimedia Commons, there is a lack of user-friendly tool. So actually, usually 
so far, there was little project organized and some institution has tried to collaborate, but to do so, they had to collaborate with one person employed by the Wikimedia Foundation to help them to do that because they couldn't do it by themselves. They couldn't access to the, 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 the upload functionality. It was really difficult. The same happened to, um, to provide metadata with uh, these um, this media files because Wikimedia is using specific templates, which are a little kind like of a metadata standards, and you had to map your, your data to this kind of template, and there is no tools to help you doing so. You have to create little, what they call bots in the Wikimedia Foundation community, so little code that will help you to transform that. So what happened is some institution participated in project, they had provided some content, and they were really interested to provide more. The problem is the only person from the Wikimedia Foundation collaborating with them suddenly was completely overbooked and you had a huge backlog of images that were still queuing to be uploaded. So it was the problem of the Rijksmuseum, for example, in Netherlands, which has a backlog of one year of, of picture and they are waiting. They are really interested in collaborating and, and providing content, but they just can't do it because nobody is available to help them to do it. Then the second aspect is also why libraries, for instance, could, could do that, what, what would be the, the, not a return on investment, but what, what could be useful for them. And there is no way, once you have put content out there, to um, uh, import back the result of that. So I know there was some project to um, improve uh, old photographs. So you had institution, they had provided black and white photograph, and some people had improved this photograph. They were in a very bad state. Uh, you couldn't really see the image properly, so there was some enhancement done uh, to this, uh, to this uh, media file, and it could have been interesting for the, the institution to get this back um, into their, their own services. And also, what could be also um, a motivation is to have statistic. Once you put content in Wikimedia Commons, it can be reused by anyone. It can be reused into Wikipedia articles. It can be reused by journalists when they are writing uh, something on, on a specific topic. So it could be interesting for institution to also know how their content is reused uh, elsewhere. So that's why we have worked on what we call the, the Glam Wiki Toolset project. Um, so what happened is since uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, they didn't have the resources to, to, to work on that, they have called, uh, they have contacted Europeana. And since in Europeana, we have now quite um, a large expertise in dealing with uh, metadata format coming from different uh, domains and how to map this data, uh, we said that we, we could help. So we were funded by four Wikimedia chapters, uh, UK, Netherlands, France, and Switzerland. So they funded us, and uh, the development was done um, inside Europeana. So the, the Wikimedia board was just there to, to check if they were happy with our work, and they gave us money to, to do it. So the project started in uh, September last year, and the main objective was to build um, a friendly system which would help institutions to import their content into Wikimedia Commons, but also to map their data in an easy way to the templates used uh, within Wikimedia Commons. And a second aspect of this project was also to provide clear requirements to the Wikimedia Foundation uh, data analytics team, which is in San Francisco, uh, to, uh, to, to provide requirements on what, what kind of statistics the GLAMs are in interested in. So this was the second aspect of the project, and I'm not going to talk that much about uh, this aspect. Um, so we came to uh, this idea. So basically, on one side, you have the, the, the GLAM repository. Libraries could be, could be the, is an example of that which could import or export their data into what we have called the, the Glam Wizard, which now is the Glam Wiki toolset, where they could uh, import their content, mapping it, transforming their data, previewing it, and then directly upload this content into Wikimedia Commons. Once 
the content is in Wikimedia Commons, then it can be reused by Wikimedia into their various projects. So the metadata can be reused in the Wikidata project. Images can be reused in uh, the Wikipedia article. You have also the Wikisource project. So you have many possibility of reuse of what you would provide into, uh, into Wikimedia Commons. Uh, then through the logs, um, the Wikimedia analytics could provide tools to see how this, uh, this content is reused and then provide uh, information to, to institution, which could then be reused at um, a business level, for instance. So this was um, the, the broad picture that was, uh, that was sketched at the beginning and it hasn't changed that, that much. So we started the project and at Urbana, since we are quite used to do this kind of work to develop tools for mapping, to map data, we thought, well, it's going to be, to be easy. We, we have already some tools, we can reuse the code. Um, it's going to, to, to be fairly easy, but actually it was not. Uh, first, in terms of development, um, the developer who has worked on this project is an expert in PHP and Java, and the Wikimedia Foundation, they don't like Java at all. So then it was, okay, we can't reuse our tool because the tool we had already in hand was developed in Java, so we couldn't reuse this thing. So we had to rebuild everything from scratch. And we had to conform to the, the requirements of, uh, of Wikimedia because this tool actually is meant to be implemented into Wikimedia Commons, so it had to, it had to respect all the rules defined by, by Wikimedia Commons in terms of uh, coding. So it took actually more than one month for our developer to, to figure out how it was working. Uh, so just to set up the first uh, Hello World page uh, was quite complicated. So what we have used is um, a Wikimedia Labs instance, so when you want to develop uh, a little application for Wikimedia Foundation, uh, they are proposing you to use what they call the Wikimedia Labs. So it's a test environment where you can develop your thing and it will act exactly as the Wikimedia Commons um, tool and, and you can start developing your thing within this, uh, this environment. And then for the repositories, uh, well, I'm not an expert on that, but uh, the Gerrit extension and GitHub extension has been, uh, have been used. So I guess you can go to the project page to know more about the, the technical aspect of the project because I'm, I'm not so familiar with uh, the technical architecture behind, but it's what we have used. So we have created this uh, project page where you can find information. So yeah, so the development has started and um, also what an important point, and it was mentioned this morning, is that Wiki media is a community. So each time you develop something, you have to post your code and to get it validated by the community. And for the developer, it was also not so easy. So either nobody was giving feedback, so <laughs> just say, okay, maybe it's okay and I can continue. But then suddenly there was a lot of people commenting on the code and say, oh no, you can't do things like this. You have to use this little bit of code. We have this plugin you have to use. Etc. So for him, it, it, it was quite um, a, another way of, of working. It was not a, a nightmare, but it was quite an interesting uh, experience. <laughs> so when developing the tool, we had different, uh, different requirements. So the step one was mainly to upload content in Wikimedia Commons too. So you would upload your, your file, uh, either an XML file or CSV file into, into the system. And um, so you would upload the content, you would be able to preview it, and then to upload it, and it would be directly published into Wikimedia Commons. Um, I think there is no stage where the content is um, checked, there is no mediation, so as soon as you upload something, it should be available directly into the, the repository. Uh, the idea was to, to build a plugin architecture uh, by using maybe some, some APIs, so to have something quite flexible. Um, the other thing was that this architecture was uh, institution uh, should have been able to update uh, their file as they want and uh, upload the changes. So if you have uh, a change into the metadata, you should be able to do that quite, quite easily. 
And since Urbana is involved in, in the project, the idea was to also to propose to uh, people contributing to Urbana to also activate from there uh, a direct upload into Wikimedia Commons. So when people send content to Urbana, they could say, oh, uh, I want also this content to be into Wikimedia Commons, so you can push it um, uh, further. So this was the, the requirement. And it, everything had to be fairly easy and, uh, and yeah, fairly easy, simple, and also to make institution independent from the Wikimedia Foundation. So to be able to do everything by themselves without, without having to, to find someone available because you don't have that many people working per chapter. So it can be sometimes a nightmare to find a contact. So this is the, the interface of the tool. So it really looks like the, the um, an environment in a, a Wikipedia page. So it's fairly simple. And, and it was the objective. So maybe institution would say, oh, maybe it's too simple. But we had to, to answer to the requirements of the, the Wikimedia Foundation at that level. So what you can do, and I will, it's at the bottom of the page. So first, you have the, the file upload. So at the moment, the tool is available to uh, charge a CSV file or XML file. So it was the, the first thing we have uh, worked on. Once you upload your file, you would be available, you could access to this kind of information. And Wikimedia Foundation is quite good at tracking changes and updates uh, in a, in, into the content. So if you go on Wikipedia, you will see all the modification of a page, for example. So everything is quite well monitored. And, and this happened for, for the XML file, for example, you would have um, uploaded, so you can check and see if someone has uh, changed it. So you have some information about your, your file. Um, at the bottom, you see um, a category. So I will explain that later, but you can categorize the, um, your file. And when you click on this link, you will access to all the files that have been uh, uploaded, so you could um, either reuse the same file or upload a new one. The step two was uh, mapping uh, the, the data. So as I said, uh, Wikimedia Commons is using some, uh, some, some templates. So we have to provide an interface which would allow the mapping of the standard used by the institution, so all, um, the metadata format used by institution to the Wikimedia Commons template. And this should be uh, fairly easy again. Um, these are the, the templates that are proposed by, um, by uh, Wikimedia Commons. So what happened is um, at the beginning, you had very few templates. And then because you had all these different little projects um, starting uh, around Wikimedia Commons, you have people that have started to create many, many different templates and to create for every kind of project a new template saying, oh no, this template, uh, I'm missing one element in there, so I'm going to create a new one. And this has started to be quite a, quite a problem. So what we have done for the tool is to select four templates which were for us the most relevant for culture, the cultural institution we are working with. So we have selected uh, the template called Heartwork because we thought it was uh, fairly good for a museum. Uh, there is one called Book, so for the library content and for books. There is one for photograph and one for video and one for music, I think. So we have cho chosen, we have selected um, some templates there. Um, when I've started to work on the, on the mapping, for when I look at the templates, as a metadata specialist, I saw mm, they are not richer enough uh, there are um, information missing there, but when I started to propose a, an updated version of this template, actually I got some negative reaction from, uh, from Wikimedia Foundation. So actually we haven't changed uh, the template. They, are, they remain as they were because I, couldn't, I was not allowed to, to change them. So uh, behind the templates, what we have, so the templates are actually transforming the data in a format which looks like that. Uh, which was, I was not familiar with that at all. <laughs> the first time I was, yeah, it looks like a wiki, wiki language. So actually the data has to be transformed into this kind of, um, of templates to be uh, uploaded into Wikimedia Commons. So uh, in the tool, uh, the next step is um, to select a template. So you have this uh, 
which media wiki template. So you have a drop down uh, box and there you will have the templates I mentioned. So artwork, books, the one we have selected. Um, and then you can create the mapping. If you have already created a mapping, you could find it back in uh, the category. So when you click on that, uh, you have access to all the mappings that have created that have been created uh, before, so either by you, so then you can just go back to this mapping and modify it a bit, or you could access also to mapping that has been created by other people and you think, oh, this, quite, this is quite good for me, so instead of recreating a mapping, I would just reuse what someone uh, has done before. So it's really focused on, on the reuse of, of uh, work done, uh, done by other people. Uh, then this is the mapping interface. So again, fairly simple. So you have um, the first column on the left is the, the templates, the Wikimedia Commons templates. Then you have your data on, on this side and then you just select um, the field to which in a, yeah, you just do your mapping from your original field to uh, the templates. At the moment, the tool, because for us it was easier, so we have worked with Dublinco and the Yopana data format. Uh, I have created mappings to METs and MODs, and they are going to be put in the tool. But at the moment, because our funding is going to stop soon, so it will be the only mapping uh, available for now. What is really important is to indicate um, a URL to the media file, because Wikimedia Commons is about media, so the purpose of uh, this repository is to have uh, media files. Then you have the little metadata um, with this content, but you really need to have a, a link to a JPEG or a PDF to, to be able to have something in the tool, other, otherwise it, it won't work. Uh, the step three uh, was about publication. And as I said already, this project has to, has to conform to the best practice and the standards defined by uh, the Wikimedia community. And also to um, provide good, good metadata with the object, but also to allow user to find this content back into Wikimedia Commons. And for this, uh, you might be familiar through Wikipedia, but uh, Wikimedia Foundation is using categories. So when you go on, uh, on Wikimedia Commons, you are able to filter uh, the content per category. So, uh, for example, we have, we have um, I don't know uh, which one I open, yeah, type, and you will have a selection of different type, and the content has just be, been kind of tagged with this category. So it's just a way of grouping content. And the Wikimedia Foundation asked us to implement this um, as well through the tool, because they really want the content from GLAND to be formatted in the same way than, uh, than the other type of content they have already. So this is the uh, main categories. And then when you, um, so there is the categories and there is something else which is called the info box. So when you go on a Wikipedia article, sometimes you have this little box on, on the right of, of the page where you have your information that are more specific to an institution, a place, uh, sometimes it's about uh, rights, so we have also implemented this in, in the tool, so you can provide more information about a specific resource. So for example, this is for the, the British Library, so you, pro you can provide more information about the place. And you have also this available for the, the rights information. So you have these templates that are provided by Wikimedia Commons and they wanted us to implement that in the tool. So you are able to, when you do your mapping, to specify, to create this kind of category. So when you publish the content, it will appear in uh, this way, so uh, with the, the nice formatting around it. So for example, yeah, you want a category for the Humboldt uh, University, so then you would end up with uh, a box like this for the Humboldt University, etc. Uh, then, uh, when you press the final button for publication, you will have access to all the images you have, um, you have uploaded in, a, in the tool, so you can see the images uh, you have uploaded. Uh, you will see there is one blank there, um, so uh, it, it means that there was no images. I had no link for, the, for this, so there is no content uploaded. So then you can access to the images and you have uh, information 
uh, related to when you have uh, uploaded it, when it was changed for the last time, etc. And you can also look, search for it uh, within the tool. Uh, so if you click on one of these images, so you will have access to the image that has been um, uploaded. So you have access then to different um, other functions. So the file history, the file usage, and you have also the little metadata you will have prepared through the mapping tool. So you have uh, information about the, um, the digital object. This is done automatically uh, via Wikimedia Commons. You don't have to specify them. For the metadata, you, you have to specify them through through the tool. Uh, yeah, so I know from maybe if, if you are a metadata expert, you might think it's not enough information, but if you think that the aim of this is actually just to push contents to be reused in articles, etc., cetera, um, few metadata are enough to be able just to identify the, the source of, of this image. So in, in this particular context, I, I think it's enough. We don't have to, to, to push for, for more complexity. The idea is really to make something that can be used uh, quickly, easily. Uh, yeah, so, um, so now where we are. So the project is going to run uh, till the end of this year. So now the tool is still a prototype, so there is still some bugs to, to fix. Uh, but you can already uh, test it through, through this link. And the idea that the th is that the tool will be validated by the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, they, well, they have funded it, so in principle there should be any problem, but they have to validate that actually it's what they wanted and, um, and we have implemented the functionality that are important for them. So then the tool will be integrated into uh, Wikimedia Commons and be available for institution to use if you want to put content into Wikimedia Commons. Uh, the other aspect of the project, which was more on the statistic as aspect, uh, a report should be published quite soon. And then in San Francisco, they are going to implement uh, the statistic requirement into their, uh, the tool they have to manage statistics. So we have um, done a survey uh, with institution asking them what kind of um, type of statistic they, they would need, so like how many uploads uh, of an images, um, et cetera, what kind of information they, they would need, and this will be implemented um, in a, at the level of the Wikimedia Foundation. This tool has been developed uh, with the collaboration of the, Wiki, the, the community of, uh, of, of the, the Wikimedia Foundation. So it's open, anyone can contribute to it. Since it was quite a small project, I mean, it was yeah, just one year, it went really fast, so we couldn't do all the things we would have liked to do. So there is still missing things, so you are very welcome if you are interested to, to develop actually this, to, to improve this tool and to develop the functionality that are important for you. But, but still missing in the tool. So, for example, ideas for future developments. Uh, we haven't developed the, um, the functionality which would allow uh, libraries to get back uh, possible enrichment done on their images. So there is no, the loop hasn't been completed in a way. So you can um, export things into Wikimedia Commons, but you can't get it back from Wikimedia Commons. So this bit still needs to be uh, developed. Um, at some point, we had thought about um, developing an OEI PMH harvester or module into this tool because at the moment you, ju you can just upload uh, files, so it can be quite tedious uh, to do. So we thought it could be nice to have a, um, a OEI PMH uh, module there, which would help you actually to harvest thing into Wikimedia Commons, but also get it back uh, from Wikimedia Commons. Uh, and in terms of data, we haven't worked um, on the mapping uh, to marks. So for example, if you want to push content but they are uh, described using the mark format, at the moment it's not implemented in the tool. So you could provide a mapping from mark to one of the Wikimedia Commons templates and impl implement it in this tool so that it would be available through the interface I've, um, I've shown you. So yeah, these are ideas. There might be other things we haven't thought about, but 
uh, yeah, you are very welcome to, to contribute to, to that. And yeah, and that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs>